And uh, so they, they've got to learn how to do this someplace. And typically, uh, what we are looking for in a person that comes to the seminar is somebody that is already a starting strength coach, someone who's operating at that level, having brought the experience, the expertise, and the background information with them into the seminar. We don't, you can't come to our seminar and become a coach. You have to come to our seminar as a coach and get recognized as a coach, which means that it takes a couple of years before you come to the seminar, before you're qualified to pass the thing. And again, our pass rate's about 15%. Last time I looked, Pass rate at the NSCA's precious little CSCS certification is about 70%. And, and really, I don't know how you fail it. you really got to be not plugged in to fail that exam. Ours is a completely different situation. When you come to our, our seminar, you have to be able to coach on the platform before you can take the test. Mm-hmm. In other words, the primary test for a starting strength coach is being able to coach being able to coach before you show up. And that requires experience. And you have to get the experience from someplace. And I thought it was fascinating that your article makes Mm -hmm. the same argument. Yeah, well, I would say that the dominant way that we've learned through most of history has been through some form of apprenticeship. You know, that you watch someone who's skilled at what they do You attempt it yourself. They monitor you and give you feedback. This is sort of how we're hardwired to learn things. And it's only been in the last like 100, 200 years that education in the sit in a classroom for a long time and take notes and then pass some sort of conceptual test based on that information has become popular. And it it even turns out that a lot of the research that's been done on how well we apply the things we learn in school often show that we don't do a very good job of it. So the kinds of things you're talking about were a situation where people spend multiple years in university and then they go and try to apply it in the real world and they're unable to, which is the experience that you've talked about. Now there's even a, a whole scientific study of transfer, which is where you apply, learn something in one place, like let's say a classroom, and then you have to transfer it to another place, let's say in the gym or in real life. And it turns out that there's lots of studies showing we're really bad at this. So one example that I find really fascinating is people who studied economics in school, so they majored in economics, didn't do better on questions of economic reasoning than people who were non-economics majors. (laughs) In another example, people who took a high school psychology class did not do better at a later college level psychology class. And like, I mean, these are pretty basic things. If you figured if there's anything that studying an economics class would be good for, it would be economic reasoning. And yet this has been surprisingly hard to find. So I think your experience where people spend years studying, you know, muscles and kinesiology and this kind of stuff, and then they come into a real practical situation, they can apply it is, is not just true of weightlifting, but true of many, many domains. And I think it represents something very basic about how we learn things.